Hey everybody, Greg Treziak here, bringing you the top five visual changes from the new December 2023 update. I honestly think some of these changes are easily implemented and really are game changers to the way your report looks and feels. So I'm super excited to show you these five top great changes. There's tons of little idiosyncrasies to them that you can explore, uh, but let's dive in and look at a couple of the visual changes uh, in store for us. So first things first, I wanna take a peek at what is going on with mostly pretty much bar and column charts, and then we'll get into our last tip, which revolves around maps. So I'm gonna take this first visual right here, the count of bank name by state, and I'm gonna go over to the format your visual button from there, if you were to compare November to December, really nothing's gonna pop out to you, but there are some changes here and most of those revolve around the bars themselves or if you're looking at columns, the columns. So I'm gonna go right down to bars here, open that up and let's take a peek at our first major change. That is gonna be this transparency area right here. That transparency area, we now can go in, add a transparency element to the and then it's gonna fade into the background. And we've seen this in a lot of the wallpaper, background type of settings before, but not so much on our data bar. So this is gonna be a pretty major change. We can customize this, have a little bit of fun with it, and allow images to show through a little bit. My only Pragmatic Works pro tip for you here would be careful of if you have any background images, you kinda of might make things a little bit distracting, but overall, First really cool feature, uh, and I'm, I love it. I'm gonna use this a lot, so very excited about that one. Right below here is gonna be number two. So we have borders. So I'm just gonna drop this to a just 50% transparency, so we know it's there, not too crazy, and go ahead and turn on borders. So borders here are gonna be a lot like the visual borders that we have when we're creating a theme or just applying borders to our visual. Maybe we're rounding those corners as well with our radius. But here, now we've got these awesome borders just hanging out around uh, our data bars. And you can go in, you can change the color. Maybe I wanna do orange, I'm going orange and blue there. I can also make those a bit transparent individually. I can change their width so I can make them pretty impactful. Or I can just go in and match that bar color so I am pretty much closely uh, matching that if I need to. That is a major change, number two, that I love. I think that is a much needed feature. It just allows your data to stand out and I really enjoy that. So one of my new favorites. Tip number three. Tip number three is gonna be data labels. And right below here, I'm gonna actually close out of our bar section and drop over to data labels and turn those on. You can kind of see our generic data labels. I'll make this visual a little bit bigger for a second here. You know, we're just, you know, going through the motions of those data labels, but now we can add some pretty amazing things. So a couple of features have been moved. One of those is overflow text and optimize the label display. That has been moved from a different dropdown right here under options. So you can go in and make uh, allow overflow text. So if you were to run out of space like I am here, you can go to that overflow if you need. But a couple interesting things here. One, predominantly, we can't have titles here. But really, the biggest part of this update is right here in this value section. The value section to data labels, we can go in and explain kind of what's going on in this field area. So right now I've got count of bank name count. Well, you know what? What if I wanna change this up a bit? I'm gonna go in and instead go with, uh, let's go with closing date of these failed banks. And then I can do the earliest closing date or maybe I change it to the aggregation is the latest closing date. So I can keep a total of, hey, when was the last closing date that we encounter? That's another cool feature. So now I know when these uh, banks had failed last. We had one in California pretty recently. The rest were just a little bit back behind. So you can adapt those fields, customize them, make them what you want. And looky here, we've got the transparency feature again. Awesome 
to be able to bring that in. So please investigate some of the changes that are here in those data labels. There's some pretty awesome stuff, especially with uh, really this detail section. We can add in another component. I could go in and say, hey, you know what? I've got state over there, but let me put, uh, let's just put it this first city, or maybe I go to the last city as well. So I know exactly when the bank most recently closed and I know a, a whereabout it did. So data labels are becoming way more than just putting a number and calling it a day. The flexibility you have now with data labels is absolutely outstanding. Now, is there a lot going on with this one? Sure, but you can probably are to de are already kind of guess some concepts that we might be able to throw in some different things. And that includes saying, hey, you know what? I wanna work with some measures that I've created and have those going in there. Uh, and it, you have a lot of great features there. So I really like that as well. You always have those backgrounds and we can adapt our transparency as needed. So that is another one that I really, really enjoy. I'm gonna actually turn those backgrounds off so it's just not too in our face and go over to this right-hand side visual for tip number four. This is gonna be the awesome thing about the new update is the spaces between. So right here, I'm gonna add in a little bit more data so we can see this feature in action. Right now I've got the months of those failed banks. I'm gonna go in and throw in year. And let's just put year into the legend. There's a lot of years going on. So quickly here, I'm just gonna apply a filter, basic filter. So we're just looking at a few years. Let's look at, you know what? Let's go with 08, 09. You know what? Mm, let's see, we'll see it pretty good with these. Let me add one more. I'll add 2011 as well, why not? So. With this filter here, kind of the cool feature is I can go in to uh, the format your visual area. I'm gonna go check out our columns. We still have this here, not just in the bar. We've got the ability to add those borders and different items here. But under this layout section, we're gonna be able to go in and manipulate some pretty interesting things. So first off, we can go in and make these in reverse order. So we don't have to be constrained to what is the legend is default giving us. We can go into a reverse order. We also can sort by value if we need to. And then the space between item is what's the space between the different categories you're looking at. You can customize that, make you what it make make it what you'd like it to be. And then my favorite, the space between series. So the space between series is gonna give you a nice space in between that you can kind of follow through with. And if you want, you can turn on series explosion. Series explosion gets rid of the Y axis. Why does it get rid of the Y axis? Well, if you are allowing the space between to go as you want, you are no longer on that Y axis. You are going <laughs> crazy, you're exploding it up. With it there, you can notice as this changes, the size of those specific uh, categories, those year areas are going to change. So lots of ability to change with sorting as well as the spacing between things. A lot of custom visuals, a lot of people have tried to kind of rig this to be kind of looking a certain way or another way and it just hasn't been totally accurate. Now it's here, it's innate in the Power BI. And last but not least, tip number five, and there's so much more to explore, but visually this was just, you gotta know this stuff. If you haven't tried it out, you haven't updated, make sure you update it. I absolutely love these features. Last one, I'm gonna flip over to my Q&A page here for a second and take a look at this map. This is the Azure map, and one of the biggest headaches with maps is that 300, uh, and 50 limit, uh, 350,000, oh gosh, <laughs> 3,500 limitation on individual points. That can get confusing. You can even see here, as I zoom in, I don't have a ton, right? I'm just looking at failed banks in the United States data. Kind of gets a little bit 
clustered if I get to certain views. I don't really get the bigger picture till I zoom in. Well, there's definitely gonna be use cases where I'm gonna to wanna to go in, customize this visual, format it here, and I'm gonna go check out right over here in bubble layer, cluster bubbles. Cluster bubbles here, I can turn this on, manipulate it as I want, but now we're gonna have automatic clustering. So at that large scale view, I can see a lot of those failed banks coming from the East Coast. As I zoom in, I can see exactly where those failed banks are coming in from. And then it just continues to do that and splits it up. So even as I go further in to my visuals, I can start to see uh, they really cluster up. And this is great for if you have a lot of visualizations that you're kind of working with, a lot of mapping points. I really like that. You also can adapt the color of the text, what those text is doing inside, and manipulate it as easy. So I love that ability right there. Listen, there is more to explore in this December update, but we gotta let you know some of these awesome things, especially when it comes to visualizations. Those are definitely the top five things that I would try right now in that December update. They're gonna be a game changer reports. Again, this has been Greg Treziak at Pragmatic Works. I'm out, everybody. Remember, stay pragmatic.